Did you know that Romans made sauce out of fermented fish guts? Yeah, it's true. You know what else they did? They ate these rodents called dormice. And they also put grapes in their bread. I know, it sounds pretty weird, doesn't it? But it's actually really delicious. And if you stick around, we're gonna make that recipe together today on The Old School Kitchen. I am a Roman archaeologist, alumna of the University of Leicester, just up the street. I am a bread baker. There's nothing I love more in the world than baking bread. And I am also a food intaker. That means I love to eat. And the foods that I love to eat most are foods that were made by the ancient Romans. So today I've put together a little recipe and a tiny little presentation for all of you kids about Roman bread and a specific type of bread that is my favorite recipe. And just to let you in on a little secret, right now, I'm actually fast asleep. It's true. I've pre-recorded this video because it's about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon in Britain, and I am in California. So I am a whole other continent away, and I'm eight hours behind you. So I'm actually in bed right now, fast asleep. So for today's recipe, we are going to make a Roman bread called grape must cakes. This actually means that little bits and pieces of grapes were incorporated into the bread and it is so delicious, I think you're going to love it. But before we start, let's actually take a minute to learn a bit more about who the Roman people were. The Romans were a large group of people who came into being along the banks of a river in the city of Rome around 3,000 years ago. They were fearless, smart, and adventurous people who traveled far and wide from as far south as North Africa to as far north as Scotland. The Romans even came to Leicester approximately 2,000 years ago. They traveled so much because they needed more food, land, citizens, and natural resources in order to sustain a growing Roman population. To be Roman, however, didn't necessarily mean that you had to be from Rome, as Romans came from many different places, were many different races, and spoke many different languages. Romans were very good at many things too, such as reading and writing, making pottery, building ships and trading with other people, making swords and coins, building huge temples and buildings, and also building beautiful cities. But these are not the only things that Romans were really good at. The Romans were also really, really good at making bread. It is thought that the Romans may have made over 70 different varieties of bread, but archaeology tells us that they made primarily four types of loaves, and one type of loaf in particular was very popular, the panis quadratus. The Roman people loved bread so much that bakeries were built in most Roman towns in order to bake bread for the people, and you can still see many of these bakeries in Italy today. Bakeries in ancient Rome would have been much like Starbucks or Pret-a-Manger for you and I. They were on almost every single corner. This was because many Romans lived in small apartments that didn't have kitchens. In addition to what you just saw in the Roman bakeries, is something else that the Romans used to make bread, and it is called a clebonis. And this is a type of a miniature ceramic oven that Romans would use either in the home or in a small restaurant or bar. And you could use it by heating it up on a cooktop with embers and ashes that come from the fire, and you would put your loaf of bread onto it, or a chicken or meat or anything that you were heating up, and you would put the lid on top, you would pile ashes and embers onto the top of it, and it would act as a small oven. So if you didn't have a huge oven like you see in the commercial bakeries, you would use something like this in your hearth or on a cooktop in your home or in a small setting such as a bar or a restaurant. But even with all of this information that we can look at to look at Romans and how much they love their bread, there's still questions that remain. 
And one of the biggest questions out there is, did Romans put yeast in their bread? Yeast is a natural ingredient that bakers put into bread dough to make the loaf lighter, fluffier, and full of tiny air pockets. Some scholars believe that Romans did not use yeast in their breads because they assumed that the writings of Cato the Elder, the man who wrote about the recipe we are making today, reflects the truth about Roman bread making on the whole. You see, Cato didn't like yeast. He may have felt that it was unhealthy or too complicated, but he may have also felt that Roman breads could have been made faster without having to wait for them to rise. But if you take a look at Cato, he kind of looks like a man who doesn't like nice things, doesn't he? Maybe he'd look happier if he had a nice fluffy loaf of bread once in a while. You see, the problem with thinking that Cato's breads were the only breads made in Rome is that the archaeology tells us a much different story. If we look at paintings of bread in Greece and Etruria that were made hundreds of years before Cato was even alive by people who exchanged food culture and recipes with Romans, these loaves certainly look light and fluffy to me. Personally, I think the Romans probably did a little bit of both. I think that they put yeast in some of their breads, which we call leavened breads. And I think that they also probably made breads without yeast, which is what we call unleavened breads. So with that knowledge in your back pocket, let's go ahead now and let's make Cato the Elder's grape must cakes. But before we begin, let's remember one key thing. Grapes didn't grow in England when the Romans were in Leicester. So this recipe calls for a fruit that grew only in the Mediterranean region at that time. The other ingredients that are in the recipe were probably imported into England, or of course cheese was made in England at the time. So this is okay, but let's remember that when we're working with grapes, that grapes weren't grown in Leicester or in England at that time. Are you ready? Let's make grape musk cakes. Here's the ingredients that you're going to need.
time has finally arrived to taste Kato's grape musk cakes, and I'm really, really, really excited, and I hope that you are too. So my cakes baked for a total of 45 minutes in the oven. I watched them, and when they started to bronze, I brought them out of the oven and let them cool for two hours. Once they were cool to the touch, I brought them out and I arranged them on this wooden platter with some bay leaves in between, a little bit of bay leaves on top, in a manner that might have been used in presenting them on a Roman table, either at a banquet or at home. So when you go to actually taste these, you're going to notice that the bay leaf that we baked them on is stuck to the bottom. So you want to take that off. You don't want to eat the bay leaf. It's meant to flavor the bread while it's baking, but you're not really supposed to eat it. So crack your loaf open and pull the leaf off the bottom. And then when you move to taste your loaf, Consider having some condiments around that the Romans might have used when they were eating these loaves as well. I've got honey and olive oil here. Adults might also want to have a little bit of red wine on hand, some red wine mixed with water, and dip the bread into it and see what the sweet and savory elements of this bread is like with each condiment that you taste it with. It's actually pretty amazing. So I'm going to start myself with a little bit of olive oil. Mmm. 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 I love it. The olive oil, of course, is going to bring out the savory aspects of the loaf, which is um, punchy and the cumin and the anise and the little bitterness of the olive oil is really beautiful. The kids are probably going to like the honey. So if you try it with a little bit of honey, it's probably going to accent the grapes and bring out the sweetness of the grapes, which you'll also notice there's a little bit of a crunchiness to the loaf, and that is from the sugars that's in the grape juice in the loaf. When it bakes, it hardens and it makes the loaf much crunchier than your common loaf that is made with water and flour. Mm. Mm. Jupiter, take the wheel. This is amazing. Mm. With honey, it's fantastic. Now the good thing about these loaves too, is that you can also put some modern ingredients on it if you want. You've got a lot that you have to eat over the next few days. So you'll be happy to know that they also go beautifully with butter, with cheese, with some nice sharp old cheddar. I might even throw some Stilton on it and uh, as well as some prosciutto, some ham. Uh, meat goes beautifully with it because of the savory aspects of it and because of the sweetness of the grapes. So with all that said, I would like to say thank you now for joining me and thank you to the Lester Classics Hub for inviting me to participate in Roman Lester Family Day. I hope that you enjoyed this. It's probably about 4 p.m. now in England, so it's 8 a.m. in California, which means I'm probably waking up right about now. So if you want to come on by and visit, come to my website at www.tablamediterranea.com Drop me a line, let me know how you enjoyed the workshop, and try some more recipes that I have on my website for food in ancient Rome. Thank you, Luster. Enjoy the rest of your day, and keep cooking it old school. Ciao for now.